What's going on you guys? Today I am going to talk about a species that is very obscure and there's probably not a whole lot on YouTube about it or videos or even just regular material uh, for that matter. Boiga cynodon, one of the most ridiculous common names I've ever heard, dog tooth cat snake. Where they came up with this name, I don't know. Cat snake, of course, is sort of the common name for the genus Boiga. The dog tooth part of it, I have no idea. I do not suspect that they have dog teeth, like enlarged teeth in the front of their mouth. They are a rear fang species, so of course, you know, they are a, a rear fang animal. But where they come up with those names, I don't know. That's why I like to stick with the scientific names. Boiga cynodon. This particular species will occur all the way from southern Thailand down into Malaysia, Singapore of course, Indonesia, and into the Philippines. Now I have Malaysian animals here and I just got some really interesting animals. They came from a zoo in Russia and they are captive bred and they are from the Philippines. Very different, um, maybe not to an inexperienced eye but for me they look very very different and they're beautiful and there's a couple that I'm going to show you at the end that are way different beyond anything any of you guys have seen before uh, myself included they are really incredible so the thing that I like the most about Boiga Synodon is that they like to eat birds and eggs so eggs you guys how easy is that you can go to Sprouts, you can go to Asian Market, just get those little quail eggs, the kind that they have like in the sushi bar, and they eat those things whole. Now, unlike an egg-eating snake, uh, the egg-eating snake will consume the egg but then regurgitate the shell. Boiga cynodon will consume the entire egg and they will not regurgitate the shell. They digest the entire thing. So what I like to do is, this is just something that I do, I crack the egg with a sh with a with like a spoon. Just get it cracked a little bit because I figure if the stomach acid has to work that hard to digest through the egg shell, then I may as well get a head start for those guys, crack the egg, and then that way the digestion process can just be a little bit more efficient. Um, but very, very easy. I'll put those eggs in in the evening time near a hide or whatever, and they'll consume the entire egg. And then of course, um, for the real big ones, usually I do frozen thawed chicks. For the small ones, like I'm gonna show you now, uh, like day old frozen dog quail work really well also and I try to alternate between the two. These are probably the very longest of all the Boiga genus. I've seen some really big animals like 10 foot plus but they are extremely thin and they are adapted for climbing. So obviously it goes along hand in hand with the diet eating birds and eggs out of bird nests and that sort of thing. Super lightweight, very thin and uh, they get way up to the to the very tips of those branches out there and they can get even you know even the the bird nests that are at the very end of those branches because they don't weigh anything and they're not going to collapse down any uh, branches or trees and that sort of thing so anyway i know you guys are here to see snakes so let me get started i'm going to show you guys the synodon okay you guys another thing about boiga synodon is that Usually they're very hesitant to strike. I very rarely have met one that is, you know, outwardly defensive and striking and that sort of thing. But this is a Malaysian animal and this is somewhat typical of the appearance of a Malaysian. This snake right here is probably about six feet long, but they're, like I said, you know, they're just long and super thin. There are some that are very dark pigmented. Um, I'll put some of that video footage up right now for you guys to see from a, pre a previous video, some animals that I interacted with on the, f the facility in Malaysia. We don't have any of those heavily pigmented animals here at the moment. But really, really beautiful snakes. And kind of the dominant color of the Malaysian animals is sort of like this yellow gold color. And this animal is this like a juvenile or sub-adult. This isn't even close to being full grown. Just a really nice specimen from Malaysia. I'm going to show you one more Malaysian animal that's a little younger and is a bit of a different color. So here's another one. Obviously this is a juvenile. Has a much different 
kind of color palette to it. Now it may develop more gold color as it grows, but for right now it's holding sort of this weird like bubblegum color to it. But very nice specimen. And again, looks like a super tiny snake. Stretch it out, it's going to probably go almost four feet already. And it weighs nothing. I mean, it's super, super lightweight snake. But really neat animals. And again, you know, the disposition is really calm. Okay, now we're going to move on to the Philippine animals. This is where it gets exciting. So you guys, look at this snake. This is so awesome. Boiga Cynodon, this one originates out of the Philippines. It's a captive bred animal and the locality, the actual specific locality on these is Bohol. But look at that, that is just amazing looking. If you've seen a lot of them like I have, you will notice a difference right away. Now you, of course, you're welcome to Google images and they just don't look like this. This is a really interesting locality to me. I've also noticed, and I have not seen a huge representation of Philippine Boiga Synodon, but I've noticed that a lot of the Philippine animals have like that rosy kind of color in the head and chin area. So it's kind of interesting. I don't know if they all look that way, but most of the ones that I have do. And this one is just a little bit of defense posture, a little bit of inflated throat. But man, that is just such a beautiful animal. Really excited to be working with these guys. So I have a trio of these. And then the final animal that I'm going to show you guys, final animals, are pretty spectacular. So before I get to the ones that I keep hyping up, here's another of the Bohol. And again, there's that kind of rosy red, orangey chin and head. It's a bit different from the Malaysian stuff. And of course the body color is just way different. And I do anticipate these to be changing some more. These are just youngsters, of course. Pretty snake. Okay, you guys, check this out. Boiga Synodon. I don't know if this is hypo, if it's patternless, is it both? I have no idea. I can see the pattern, like the, the base pattern is there. Those two white spots are actually part of the pattern as well on the neck there. And I have one more of these and I'm going to show it to you as well, but this, this is amazing to me. I've never seen anything like this before. Kind of looks like uh, some of the really nice Amazon tree boas that you see posted it has a lot of that same kind of color to it. That's really cool. Very, very different. I'll show you the other one. And here is a sibling animal, also slightly different has a little bit more of an offset color head and neck, which is representative of the Philippine Synodon. It's just more apparent in this particular animal. And you see a little bit of pattern there down the dorsal. Really neat looking animal.
So this is our basic setup for the Synodon. Uh, we have a branch, we have a hide, and we're using coconut husk and a water bowl. And so we're keeping them in these big tubs, these CB80 boxes. They are super active at night. Of course, all Boiga are nocturnal. So in the nighttime, when I come out here with flashlight, they are moving around and super, super active. And as soon as it starts getting light, they retire to the hide box. So I had to wake all these guys up to show you guys the animals in the video, but uh, I'm sure they'll be back to sleep in no time. But it's just a basic way that we, we keep them. We've kept them in glass tanks. We've kept them in melamine. It just so happens right now we have all the CB80s available. So this is how we're keeping them, just pretty basic setup. And then for feeding time, usually, like I said, before it gets dark, I will put a quail egg here at the entrance to the hide or maybe a frozen thawed uh, day old quail for this size animal. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Some new animals here, a new project. I've been trying to get these guys over here for quite some time, but obviously with COVID, it has been very, very challenging to get uh, any and all shipments. It's just been a tough year, but that is about it for Boiga Synodon. And there you have it. Um, somebody, one of the comments uh, in one of the videos, they mentioned to me that I am like the ambassador for the obscure and uh, non-mainstream animals. So I wanted to highlight something obscure uh, for you guys so I can live up to that reputation. And that's about it for Boyga Synodon. If you have any questions, put them in the, in the comments below. I'm happy to answer or you guys can reach out anytime. None of those animals are for sale. Um, those are, that's a, like a kind of a pet project of mine. And that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate your support, like always. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Enjoy what's left of your week. See you guys. Bye.